Hey guys, welcome to BP, the Bible Perspective. How were the seeds of racism sown in evangelicals? Now this is part five of our dissecting the sermon that Bob Jones Sr. taught in 1960. The title was, the Seg Is Segregation Scriptural? Um, he believed it was, and do evangelicals still feel this way? I'm going to say some say yes, but let's get into it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought, a comment, add it to the comments section below. All comments are welcome. Now, this is a, as I said, part five of the sermon and this very lengthy sermon that he did in 1960. It was um, 45 minutes, so this is why I'm breaking it, breaking it up in parts. But I'm dissecting and saying, here are the seeds of racism. And you will note that these seeds that Bob Jones Sr., who was founder of Bob Jones University, but more than that, he was a evangelical leader of the time. He echoed the, the, the sentiments of white evangelicals at the time. And they believed in the separation of the races. There were other leaders. The Southern Baptist, the entire denomination was racist. It was founded upon the um, belief that slavery was God's will, racism, segregation was God's will. And this was in 1845. So now if we come into the next century, you had people like Bob Jones, Sr. But you had other uh, well-known leaders pictured in this photograph here. The one to the extreme right at the top, Jerry Falwell, who in the 60s, around the same time as Bob Jones, Sr., started um, a, a movement called the Moral Majority. He also was founder of uh, Liberty University. His son on the right was an avid, <coughs> excuse me, Trump, excuse me, an avid Trump supporter. And also for other reasons not known, which I won't get into now. Uh, but um, the reason why I'm talking about now the seed, and when we refer to the seed, now what did the what what did the seeds produce? The harvest, and now you see some of these other groups that pictured the people that's pictured here. If we move to the left on the top, Jesse Lee Peters, uh, Reverend Jesse Lee Peters, who basically said black people, all black people have a mental illness, are mentally ill. Then you had Kenneth Hagin Jr who taught he didn't believe that any of the races is mixed. Now, he taught this in 1960. I don't know if he's ever changed from that, but I'll come back to that at a later uh, uh, seg uh, segment. And then you had Vody Bachman, who is to this day teaching since about 2011, his anti-racism anti uh, thing that, uh, things such as social justice, critical race theory. In short, black people need to get over slavery. Black people are the problems with racism today and not white people. In other words, he never addresses the idea that uh, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, the whole problem of racism started with white people. He doesn't address that. Then you have on the uh, bottom right, Michelle Bachman, again, evangelical, uh, basically on one point said that the, you know, to dismiss the, the, the effect of um, Racism said that the founding fathers worked tirelessly, tirelessly to end slavery. Then you got Glenn Beck, who was a Mormon. Think about this. He's a Mormon. He's not even an evangelical. He's a Mormon. Uh, Josh McDowell to the next right of him. He just got in trouble this year over some racist rants that he made. Uh, people, probably people don't know unless you're in that kind of circle. The, the person to the right of him is... Um, um, is James Wright, and um, he is a Calvinist, but he, he a few about five years ago, he posted a Facebook, a racist rant, um, about five years ago, 
Um, and again, ever since then, he's been on a, to me, racist rant, where now, he's, again, he's talking about how racist black people are, but not white people. Now, of course, the one on the extreme right, John MacArthur, and uh, I had showcased him because um, he had a direct connection to Bob Jones Sr. in that he was he attended Bob Jones University during the very time that you know Bob Jones University banned black people from attending. So what is the seeds? Now here's the harvest. This is what he said. He said this statement just earlier this year, social justice is the most dangerous movement in the church. Now he also said along with that within the last hundred years. So um, that's what I'm saying. Is, so the harvest of the seeds. Um, this is what a lot of white evangelicals believe that social justice, critical race theory, Black Lives Matter, any of these kind of movements that promote justice for black people, they say that's the problem. Now I'm saying, where did, how were these seeds sown in evangelicals that they believe is today? Let me give you an example. See that when you see it, like a these, this is just a segment here of people. This is a a segment. There are many more when you think about evangelicals as a group that they believe this in this century, right? They believe this when John MacArthur said social justice is the most dangerous. Well, um, let me bring up my uh, article. Let me go back to this, and I'm going to start this and, and move on. How were the seeds of racism sown in evangelical? Now, remember in this article, and just again, let me just quickly remind you, I'm not, if you want to go back to, you know, uh, you know, this is part five. So this article is quite lengthy, so I'm not going to take the time to really kind of backtrack. Uh, but you can start it part one and then you can kind of keep up with where we at here this is the verse that bob jones senior was using which is amazing in itself right he says it, this is acts chapter 17 and verse 26 says from one man he has made every nationality to live over the whole earth and has determined the appointed times and the boundaries where they live now, the reason why this is amazing because notice, I'm going to say cognitive dissonance, but also just to, he starts off with from one man. Now, in his, the King James Version, which he's using, he says from one blood. Think about that, from one blood. Now, it's the same meaning here. I'm using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So, I know some people that if you like the King James, we'll, we'll get back to that because he mentioned the King James he reads from the King James. But he says, from one blood. Think about that. He has made every man. So the question is, that how could race be the issue, right? He makes it that. That's the difference. Because he says here, from one man, he has made every nationality live on the whole planet to determine the appointed times of their boundaries. Now, this last phrase has appointed the times of their boundaries where they should live. This is where they insert the meaning race now keep this in mind race itself was not mentioned here nor does it even inferred because the idea of race and ethnicity is a common meaning see it was something invented in the common and it ties directly to the atlantic slave trade but if you start with the fact that god made one all from one man all from one blood then race was never the issue and of course what they say is that to and 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 bob jones has been reiterating this in his sermon that the problems of the world has been because of race mixing i'll get to that in a moment okay but that's not what god is saying right here and they use this to say well the races should stay within their boundaries which is not true he's not saying that the races should remain segregated that's not what he's saying he's saying that the, the god has appointed the different 
uh, nationalities, right? It's just ethnicities, you could even say. God put them in there. So you could, yeah, you can say God put Asians in Asians' territories. God put uh, uh, um, Africans in Africans' territories. Um, and, uh, and Native Indians in Indian territory. And of course, genetically, there is no difference in the races. Only the um, the outer makeup, right, of the ethnicity. But he says, hey, the nationalities, God placed them. That in itself is not the problem because what he is not saying that you can, that the, and, and, and of course what Bob Jones is saying is that the God did this in order to keep the races pure. More specifically, to keep the white race pure. So let, to keep that in mind, he really doesn't care that Indians mix with Chinese and Chinese mix with Africans, Africans mix with any other. It's the white race that they are most concerned about and, and, and that they, the races should be kept pure. But verse 27 says he did this so that he might seek God, so that they might seek God and perhaps might reach out and find him. That is the reason for the boundaries, not the purity of the races. Um, so, so then when he says, I want to, this is this phrase, this is, we're going to pick it up here and I'm not going to even read this whole second here. I just want to read the first sentence. He says, whenever we have the racist mix, this is Bob Jones sermon is segregation scriptural and he is perverting the scripture. Okay. Because let me remember, I said that even if that was true, then did not the Caucasian race exceed their boundaries? So they are in. So the fact that no God never told the uh, the Europeans to come out of the European nations, because according to Bob Jones, then they should have stayed. Caucasians should have stayed in Europe, not in America. They should not travel to America. There should have been no colonization in America. So he says, whenever we have the races mixed up in large numbers, we have trouble. So that's the perversion of scripture that they believe. And what we have today in the terms of the harvest, yes, how were the seeds sown? With leaders such as Bob Jones, he's not the only one, but leaders and such as Bob Jones who are perverting the scriptures to try to preserve the purity of the right race. That's it. Now, let's continue on. He says, of course, it is easy to look back over the years and see the situation from another standpoint. But when the folks up north went to Africa, <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to get it. Notice he blamed the people up north. And brought the slaves over to this country and sold them to the southern people. The southern people should have been Christian enough to have said, we will not have any slaves. We are not going ahead. But you know that they went ahead. Now, it's kind of interesting that he says this. Because, yeah, why weren't you Christian enough to say, we're not just going to by these black people and then all of a sudden the northerners sold which is a, a total lie by the way because remember um where did the first uh slaves land in 1619 okay so that's the and by the way so what where, where did they land and then he says then the southern people which by the way there was no southern people when the slaves landed <laughs> okay and then if that's the case then all of a sudden the evil northern people sold the slaves to the southern people and then the southern people took up what we know today as slavery by laws, by commerce, right? By Christianity. So this, why is this important? Because the technique, the lie, the perversion here of the truth we hear today in the form of why do I my ancestors didn't my ancestors didn't uh, buy slaves I never owned a slave 
See, the, the harvest of the seed, the perverting of the truth here. It was the northern who went all the way over and bought these slaves. And, and the southern people were just kind of weak and bought them. But the brutality, the evil, the horrors of slavery didn't come from the north, came from the south. And then after slavery, remember, was Jim Crow, in which the time he lived in. Remember, you could be a Ku Klux Klan. There were clans on his board of, of Bob Jones University. You could be a Klan member and be a part of any evangelical church, be a pastor, be a deacon, whatever, right? Anyone be welcome. So, you know, hmm. Now, only a small percentage of Southern people held slaves. Only a small percentage of them were slave owners. A great many of people in the South in the old days did not believe in slavery. They stood against slavery. But they went ahead. And the commercial, the commercial element was dominant. And people bought slaves and sold them. This slavery was not right. It should not have been. Okay, but it was, right? What should we have done? Okay, what we should have done was to have sent missionaries to Africa. Yes, that is what we should have done. That is what would have that would have been in line with scripture. Again, this is kind of amazing the interaction here that what what is true of course, what is kind of a lie. Now, notice he said the small percentage of the southern people held slaves. Why? That was a money thing. So that's true in that it was a money thing. People couldn't afford it because, remember, slavery was big business. So the more slaves you had, you had to feed them. And then, and, and then they had to right, produce money in order for you to make money. It was the Slavery was commercialized, but the morality of slavery, by the way, when he says people didn't believe in slavery, that is a lie. The harvest of the, the seeds of the belief of slavery. Let's go back for a moment to 1776. Well, let's go back even further. Let's go back to 1619. The first slaves landed where in Virginia? They did not. First slaves landed and then for the next 10 to 15 generations, you had slaves that, that were not only bought, but they were born on American soil. So that by the time we get to 1776, the ratification of the Constitution, the perversion, the immorality, and the evil was we kept slaves even though they were American citizens. So every other ethnicity who were born on this soil in 1776 were automatically granted citizenship except Africans who were born on this soil. So you had generations of slaves born on this soil. So um, then you say from 1776 to 18. Uh, well, let's go back to 1776 when they era uh, um, 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 er uh, 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 formed the Constitution. Okay, they signed the Constitution. It, remember, you had to have a moral stance. It was a perversion of morality. So how did they do that? The seeds were sown in a number of ways. One. The seeds were sown by way of law. It was it was legal to own slaves, to, to, to buy and sell slaves. Legal. Now, in a few cent uh, decades, that would be abolished. England, I think, abolished their slaves in 1820. And I believe that the last slaves, I forget what date it was, that, that America stopped buying slaves, the import of slaves. I want to say 1840, but I may be wrong on that. Okay, I may be wrong on that. But they they did a few decades after that stop the import of slave, but they kept slavery. 
which is fine if you had if you had a family of slaves you just started multiplying slaves you know like the when the masters would creep in the slave owners start breeding then other slaves breed bred slaves okay but law legally remember you could own slaves legally then think about this now then so legally you can own slaves but then um they had to justify it morally so how did they justify it morally through culture and christianity just like jones right here is attempting to do so you had to first from a mental standpoint right a psychology standpoint say it's okay so how did they do that they use science right so the, the, the biology right the biology you had to say well blacks were inferior so blacks were like animals they were inferior they were slaves they were you know they could be bought and they didn't have the they didn't have the the equal mentality they didn't even have they had a different emotion they had a different response to pain and suffering why because slaves work from sun up to sundown um when you would snatch a child a child when you snatched a child from its mother you could justify that the tears and the cries of anguish by saying well they're not really crying for the separation of the baby because they don't really have those kind of emotion they actually taught this that the physical part was different and this was a belief believe it or not that carried over into the 19th century when you would have a 20th century I should say when you had um, Jack Johnson the first black heavyweight boxer and the term great right hope came out of that because they <laughs> um, did everything they could to bring a white man to destroy Jack Johnson and they could not not only could they not but Jack Johnson would effortlessly defeat them and so they sought for and that's why they do the, the that is why they um, came up with the term great white hope they were looking for that one white man that could destroy them and if he did they would have rallied him, but they did not because why they believe that blacks were inferior in every way to the white man so emotionally mentally and physically and by the way in every category that has been debunked so uh, um this is the conditioning that was happening during this time the conditioning how else could let's just say a little eight-year-old white girl is riding in the carriage with her father and he's visiting Uncle Silas plantation as they're driving up and she's looking at the slaves working looking at all the slaves around how did she how did that eight-year-old girl think that that was okay how did how did her father think it was okay so when he says here that only a few people believed in slavery see he's lying the nation was conditioned to think this was okay now not all whites of course because there was a fierce fight in that these days against that so half of this is true and half of this is you know it, it's, it's not true the south uh um and i don't really know how many people in the south that he's talking about he, i think the, the certainly wasn't many in the south there were so there were those in the South that fought against it. I'm talking about white people too. There were those who fought against it. But remember, it was the northern what they call the northern aggression that ended slave slavery. Um. But um, the the bigger issue was why was this such an issue? Now think about this statement that he said here. Um. Only a small percentage of Southern people held slaves. Now that's kind of true because you, you have to afford them, 
in, in people with money held slaves. They said that only a small percentage of them were slave owners. True. A great, now this is the lot, a great many people in the South in the old days did not believe in slavery. They stood against slavery. Now, let me tell you why this is, this is a lie right here. This is, again, we see this type. Now, I mentioned, I showed you uh, Congressman Michelle Bachman. Remember when she, I told you she made a statement that the founding fathers work tirelessly. Now, this is an evangelical. The founding fathers work tirelessly to end slavery. That's what she said. But that was just not true. And, and we know that this is simply not true now because this man is speaking in a time 100 years after slavery but believe that the races shouldn't mix. Well, if they believed in the equality of men, why does he now believe in the separation of the races? That's why we know he's lying. The seeds of racism. How were the seeds of racism sown in the evangelicals? And of course, I'm talking about Christians, God's people. So the mentality of America was conditioned that slave is okay. In, in blacks, it was okay because they had to, they, they, it was their condition. And many slaves believe it was God's will. Many slaves believe that their condition, that they couldn't do anything about their condition. So many slaves believe that. But let's focus on the white people who believe that it was okay. Now remember again, Here's that. Let's let's just take this little girl. Let's say she's one of the small, the, the the greater percentages that Bob Jones Sr. is lying about. Let's say that okay, she's one of the greater percentage that she, her father and her family, they didn't, they could not afford slaves. They could not afford the industry of slaves, but maybe her uncle did. Or a friend. So when she says only a, 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 a small portion believe, so here's this eight-year-old girl traveling in a buggy past or upon a plantation. Do they stop and fight against slavery? Well, then, now think about what he says here, the, the lie. Um, a great many people in the South in the old days did not believe in slavery. They stood against slavery. So let me get this straight. Is that what the civil rights was about? You see, the point is that he is lying to try to justify um, really the evangelical complicity in slavery. Well, what was the civil war? If you're telling me that the civil war, that the, the great majority of people were against slavery, then why did this? Why did they fight in the civil war? Now you might keep this in mind, who his audience is, and same as today, the reason why you have the audience, he's speaking, he's speaking to an all white audience. Same day, when you look at evangelicals today, Fox News and all these other audiences, that's why they say the nonsense that they're saying. All right, now he says, uh, God put the Africans over there, right? So think about this. God put the Africans over there. Well, he put the Europeans in the European countries, right? So why are you outside of the boundaries that God had placed you? Let's continue. They are fine people. He, he's lying, because he, if they're so fine people, remember, they couldn't come to his church. They couldn't come to his university. They are intelligent people lie again. You think they're inferior. Do not think they are inferior in any way. They do because you're teaching that. It is not so, but we should have sent missionaries over there. And Africa should have been a great nation of colored Christians. By the way, they did have missionaries over there during the centuries. If we had done what God had told us to do and sent the gospel to them, and made a Christian nation out of them instead of bringing them over here and selling them into slavery. Africa could have been a great nation of colored Christians. Well, let's just stop for a moment. No, what we, what we did was wrong. It was not right. It cannot be justified. We should not try to justify it, but you are. 
but people went along some good people fell for it and went ahead with it and God overruled it meaning the end of the slavery but let's kind of go back and look at this if we had sent if you'd done what God told us and sent the gospel over there and made uh, uh, if it, no he said if we, had, if we had done what God told us to do and sent the gospel to them and made a Christian nation out of them well first of all so so let's stop and, and, and look at this phrase here a Christian nation out of them meaning to keep them over in Africa as a Christian nation well why couldn't you make Christians out of slaves and free them and make them a part of the nation that you didn't even belong with that you left your boundaries according to your statement that you left the boundaries that God had put you in see how perverted and twisted the logic is here God wanted to keep the black people over in Africa, but it was okay for the white people to colonize in every part of the world, including Africa. Let's not forget the colonization in Africa. Remember apartheid in South Africa? But let's not forget the colonization all over. Um, all right. So, okay, so, but again, keep this in mind of the, um, what am I at here? Sorry about that guy that kind of, uh, I didn't silence my phone, but anyway, so, um, so let's, let's ask this question. Why didn't God keep the white people out of Africa in terms of apartheid and that colonization? All right, he says, um, I would venture there is not a population in the world where there is a larger percentage of process professing Christians than among the colored people in the South. We Christians, white people, all have good friends among the colored people. Now, like I said, long David on the other side of the tracks. Long David on the other side of the tracks with no running water, no paved dirt roads and no electricity. He said, we Christians, white people, have good friends among the colored people. The colored people are sensing the dangers we are now, we are facing now. There is already an uprising among good Christian colored people in the South. They are trying to fight back the subtle satanic disturbance we have in this country. Now, here's the interesting thing about this statement here. Um, we have it today in the South. We call them Candace Owens, Jesse Lee Peters, Vody Bachmans. See, this is the harvest of the seeds that he is talking about, right? That know the kind of black people that are fighting against the social justice that John MacArthur says is the most dangerous movement of the hundred years in the church. That's what he's talking about. And basically, they are the good black people that says. Social justice is evil. White people are good, but I do digress. Okay, guys, I'm going to pick it up, and uh, I'm going to pick this back in up in part six. Love to hear what you have to say on this. Love to hear your opinions. Add them to the comment section. All comments are welcome. And don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. See you in part six. Six. All right.